Happy holidays and welcome to On The Line. I'm your host as always, Juan Roque, with my partner in crime, the Rhino, Ryan Knowles. And Rhino, it's been a, been a little while since we've uh, broadcast here. Yeah, yeah. Thanksgiving, yeah. my wife's yeah. birthday, ASU versus U of A. We're going to get into that in a Those little bit. Those aren't excuses. Oh, sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> they are because my wife said they are. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, of course, we're coming at you from Gangplank Studios here in Chandler, Arizona. The redone, beautiful downtown Chandler, Arizona. If you haven't come down here, I recommend it. It's got some pretty cool restaurants right down the street right now. Mm -hmm. I recommend Zocalo. The Mexican food's not bad. Murphy's Law is a hell of a bar. Oh, yeah. Really good Irish place. They got a heck of a baker's stew or baker's pie or shepherd's pie. Is that what that's called? It's really good stuff there. But I had it. It's phenomenal. And, of course, uh, Coach and Willie's, man. It's a, really, it's a new sports bar right here around the block. And this is really, really good. So if you haven't been to downtown Chile, you might want to check it out. It ain't just people looking for jobs and looking to sell drugs. It's actually really nice now. So anyway, as we get rolling here, of course, right now we can't move forward to talk about uh, the 2012 ASU season without talking about what happened a couple weeks ago. I know it's a little late, but again, with my excuses, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the U of A game here, yeah. Rhino, because in yes. Rhino's recap this week, I was actually at the sports book at the Golden Nugget, and you want to talk about a tale of, of two times. I was with my father-in-law, right? So we're, we're having some cognac and cigars, you know, life is good, and, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're watching ASU, and, you know, we're... Starting to become depressed a little bit, Rhino. So I know you you've been chomping at the bit to talk yes, about this. So yes. let's get into this. Well, what happened? And uh, well, what I, happened? Good. How did we well, do? Well, I think we can all say that the play of the year came from Keelan Johnson. You know, stripping the ball from Matt mm -hmm. Scott because I mean, U of A was driving on that play. They were looking to really put the game away. I mean, they went into the fourth quarter with a double digit lead, and Keelan Johnson stripping the ball away. Devon Car uh, Devron Carr coming up with the recovery, and ASU scoring a few plays later really turned the tide in this game because they were able to come back and you know capitalize on those turnovers. You know, three three U of A turnovers led to twenty fun, led to twenty one points the along with that was block punt. Play of the year, That's right? I'm so I mean, that, that was, was that was that was huge as well. Kevin Ayers, I mean, he's been a, a special teams beast all year, and it really culminated in that play uh, there. Uh, and you know, it was it was very exciting to watch. It was very you know probably the best quarter of, of football I think we've seen this team play just about all year. That fourth quarter, and, and, and if from, they can continue both sides the, of the if, ball, if, if, if they can continue that momentum and play football like they did in those fifteen minutes from here on out, I think we got something special going in yeah, Tempe yeah. because I've never seen a group of kids rally like they did. And I'm even talking about my own teams in '96. We we never had a double digit lead. Double digit deficit going into the fourth quarter. Maybe UCLA 95 was a game. I know well, UCLA 96, but yeah. the way they did it, mm -hmm. I have to yeah. say, that was probably one of the best of, complete team performances a lot of I've seen out of the Sun Devils yeah, since I've been involved. Really, you really, I think it really put an exclamation point on the first season for Todd Graham. You know, a marquee win against your hated rival. On their turf, the red out. Yeah, I know, right? Lord. <laughs> I mean, and Dude, those go, uniforms, buddy, they hurt my eyes, and it wasn't the they color. Were, they hurt my eyes. Yeah, they, they were not. They were not. They were not pretty. I mean, the yeah, copper yeah, helmets yeah, and red was, was, oh, yeah, it was not. Yeah, it was not. They were not. It was not very pretty. So, <laughs> but it was. I mean, a lot of this has to go. I think you have to start with the MVP of this game, and to me, that was Marion Grice. Absolutely. I think you know, 18 carries, 156 yards, and three touchdowns. I mean, it, U of A just had no answer for and him. Running people over yeah, in that yeah, fourth quarter. Exactly. Court. I mean, he was very elusive. Became he's really become ASU's most potent offensive weapon here at the end of the season. And you know, I, I was very impressed with the way he's he's come on. You know, from last year playing in the JUCO ranks, was considered the best JUCO running back coming in this year. But hey, that's kind of being the world's tallest midget almost. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, there's a big step up in competition, and for him to be as effective as he was this year, we're, we're going to recap this a little bit in the next segment. But you know, I mean, he, he was big. Taylor Kelly, you know, managed the game, moved the ball downfield, put them in a position to get points via the run game in the red zone. But the defense was huge in this game, and uh, Brandon McGee was a big reason why. I mean, he's just been a big time leader for this team all year. Oh, he had twenty big, tackles. <laughs> yeah, he had a big tackle for loss. Uh, Keelan Johnson, I talked about him. His eight tackles. He had an interception that game as well as that forced fumble. Uh, and then Robert Nelson was. Huge. I mean, here's a guy who's another JUCO. I'm uh, sorry, a transfer from Louisiana Monroe, and then he comes up with a with a play that basically seals the game. That interception he takes down to the one. Oh, and he's just able to run some some time off the clock before Michael Eubank able to put the put it in the end zone, and basically put the game away. Yeah, 41 27 at that point. Yeah, exactly. was pretty much so, over. And you know they struggled against the run a little bit. You know, Kadeem Carey he had his yards, but they were able to contain Matt Scott. And we knew and he was going to get his yards. No, were, no, nobody. Yeah. We knew he was. It was Matt yeah, Scott yeah, was really guys the number the, one the in the nation. And, yeah, guys, yeah. number one nation in the, in the year, and and, and so. <laughs> 
Uh, you know, they really contained Matt Scott. They really contained Austin Hill. So, you know, ha ha definitely hats off to the defense. They, they played a phenomenal game. And, okay. and we want to congratulate Will Sutton for being oh, the yeah. 18th Sun Devil Consensus All-American. I'm sure we're going to talk about Sutton here in the next... 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Later on in the show here, we'll yeah. get a little more into uh, Mr. Sutton Death, who... Uh, Probably has uh, one heck of a he's chomping at the bit right now, considering he's going to be playing the triple option. He, he may have 15 tackles in the bowl game. Very we'll nice. get into that. Hope so, all right, so yes. that's going to do it for the uh, ASU big victory in Tucson over the uh, Sissy Cats. And of course, we look forward to 2013 when yes. we get the rats at home, right now. Yes, sir. And I call them rats for a very special reason. We'll get that. We'll get to why I call them rats at the end of the show. But don't go anywhere. When we get back, we're going to be talking about 2012 season recap for the offense. We'll be right back.